My name is Susan DeCastro. I represent Ward 4 on the Broughton City Council. This year I'm also serving as the president of the City Council until the end of the year. And I want to welcome you all. This is a neighborhood meeting to discuss a proposed project. And the project is in the last block of East Market Street between Main Street and Montello Street. And um, it will be a, a redevelopment project. There are several existing buildings. There's a storage um, company and a moving company. The buildings will be, are proposed to be demolished and two new residential buildings with parking on the first floor will be erected. And so at this time, I think I'm going to pass the microphone to the attorney for the owner, um, John Creedon. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you. So I'm also known as Jake Creedon to everybody in Brockton. <laughs> in any event, uh, just a quick overview. We did have a neighborhood meeting some months ago. Uh, we had to change the plans. We have reduced the actual uh, amount of units from over 90 to 87. Uh, the issues that really need a variance, and a variance is a use variance. It doesn't change the zoning in that area. It's still commercial. And as you know, there are no, literally no residential people right around this particular location. What it will do is it'll take a very tired area of the south part of Brockton between Montello and, and uh, Main Street, namely East Market Street, and turn it into a very modern residential area. Uh, residential isn't allowed per se in, in a commercial uh, zone, so that is one major variance we're going for. And again, it's a use variance. As long as it's used as residential, and the zoning board allows it, it's permissible. It does not change the zoning. Uh, most of the, what we as engineers and lawyers talk about table relief, almost all of the things that are required for zoning, we comply with. So there's no need to go for variance. For example, green space. Presently, there is no green space. The requirement in that area is 10% we are over 11%. So there will be nice green space around the situation. And uh, we have with, I have with me both engineers, the major engineer, Mark Dooling, uh, with his architectural uh, firm, uh, has designed all of the buildings and what's going on. There will be some, as Sue said, some uh, demolition. Uh, the other major variance is a parking situation. Although we have five or six more required spaces for the actual residential units, uh, the overall situation, uh, some of the spaces, which is very modern in this state and every other state with conversions from uh, core city buildings that have no other higher or best use than to turn them into residential, we have reduced uh, the size of some of the vehicles, you know, compact size, for zoning in Brockton, we're required to have 180 square feet. Some of the spaces we have are slightly less than that. It requires a variance. Um, again, the other, I think, major change will be because we own both sides of the street. Basically, we are going to try to make it totally user non-friendly. In other words, no trucks, no this, no that. It's going to just be for residents. And so we have shaped the street not to be, and it's going to be one way from Main Street to Montello, not to have major vehicles using that as a cut throw. Um, that's basically uh, what I have to say. Again, we had a neighborhood meeting before. We have altered a few things, and both Mark and, and Scott Ferrier, uh, who's our local engineer, site, uh, site engineer, will be glad to answer any questions you might have I can tell you ahead of time, we did at the last meeting have one or two questions, how much are the units going to cost? That's something that can't be really firmly answered right now. Depends on the market, depends upon the time, the finished product, and a lot of other things. With that, um, I think I'll turn it over to Scott Ferrier for uh, further comments on the engineering of the Thanks, Jake. Uh, Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering. Uh, 
just a couple of real quick things. We're, we're probably better off just kicking it to you folks and answer any questions. But I just want to expand on what Jake said. The uh, We've got two buildings proposed. The building at the top of my page here has 42 residential units. The building on the lower side has 45 for a total of 87. East Market Street right now is one way. Uh, it'll remain one way. Uh, really what we're trying to do is eliminate East Market Street as a cut through from Maine to Montello uh, in order to avoid the light. So uh, as opposed to having a straight shot, we've got a, a little bit of a, a wiggle in the road layout. We've got some trees uh, that are going to be planted. We have some park benches, some bollards. Uh, and the surface is also going to be a, a cobblestone type of a surface, so it won't, uh, it really won't, if you go down there once by accident, you won't want to keep going down there. It's really not going to be conducive as a cut through. Uh, it'll be fine for emergency vehicles at 16 feet wide. Uh, we've had meetings with the fire department. They're, uh, they're fine with the layout and the width of the road. Uh, so we're really hoping that will limit the amount of traffic. The entrance to both of our uh, parking garages is kind of right up in the front, right behind the, the commercial unit. So there really isn't a, uh, a need or uh, the, the use of the majority of the street. Nobody from the from the apartments will be going all the way down the street. Everybody will be pulling in here and then just continuing to exit. So hopefully that limits uh, the amount of traffic and the, the current cut through use. Uh, as Jake said, we've got green space uh, abutting both sides of the property, a little bit of green down the middle of the road. And uh, that's it. We have, we've gone through a whole bunch of iterations of this plan. This is probably our fourth different plan. Hopefully we've got something here that works and that uh, makes the, the city and the approving agencies happy. Uh, so I think with that, Mark can take it over quickly if you'd like, or? There you go. So Mark will make a few comments, and then we can probably open it up to questions. Uh, here's, a plan that, here's a plan that is rather like the one that the engineer showed. Can you see this? You see the two buildings going from Maine down to the uh, Montella? And uh, this is a, a rendering of it, or a 3D view, one of many that you'll see. And uh, I alluded to the roof, and we're going to see a roof plan, where you'll see that about two-thirds of the roof is covered with, with uh, solar panels. The building will be an electric building. Most of the heating and cooling will be electric. More on that later. And the other third will be um, uh, green, greened up. There's no reason. It's a flat roof. Why not green it, right? Uh, you know, down here in the lower part, we'll see some more drawings related to the elevations of the long building. These are the end elevations the elevations facing uh, Maine and in the other direction. Let's move. But you can, as you can see here, uh, the blue takes a good part of the property. There was an earlier scheme presented here. When did we agree? Was it last March? Last March, and it had more buildings in it. And as we sat down and met with a contractor in a nearby community doing a lot of multifamily construction, he observed that the more buildings is, are more corners and it's more expensive. So we've consolidated the, the design into uh, two major buildings. There, there'll be four stories. There's a parking level at grade, no below grade parking, parking at grade, and then level two, three, and four and the roof, which will be accessible and usable, will not be wasted. Uh, I might mention that the, the uh, architect for this in my office uh, is an immigrant from Uruguay. And he's been here now about, I guess, eight or 10 years. Tonight is his wife's birthday. He couldn't come. She's an American. She went down there, took him off the beach, and married him. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Can I say? Uh, 
I might mention two, uh, 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 the Murrays, Everett and family, uh, are, are, maybe you know them, and Scott alluded to their properties here. They're in the moving and storage business. And uh, Everett and I together have, this is the third project we will have worked on. One, a large, I don't know how many square feet over there in Stoughton, a very, very large storage facility. And here in Brockton, a school down on lower Main Street, a high school. Um, that's the owner. The developer of this property is a company called Pua, P-O-U-A. That stands for Planning Office of Urban Affairs. That was formerly part of the Archdiocese of Boston. It no longer is. And this, these fellows are down on 84 State Street. They're doing, they're, they're a nonprofit. They're doing housing all over. They're very active. They're doing housing all over Greater Boston. Uh, they are not, uh, they're not like a cop company in Newton. They're not a for-profit organization. Nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with CARP, but they are a nonprofit, and that will be reflected in the rents you, your friends will be paying. And those, the, the cost of the building, uh, Bill Grogan explained some of that to me, and I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. They use tax credits from the federal government and tax credits from the state government. Those credits are worth millions of dollars, which contribute to the cost of construction and the eventual rents that would be paid. More on that later. Um, I want to give you some background about the design and the construction. Uh, one of Mr. Grogan's uh, main objectives in getting involved here is that the is that the tenant mix be very varied uh, age ethnically across the board he likes a community uh, he wants it to be a how do I say it a happy place to be a good place to be my wife or Charlotte uh, and I rented uh, a place in uh, uh, Waltham it's bigger than this, much bigger. And it's full of students from Brandeis and Bentley and BC and Bowdoin. They have to be a B school. And uh, they add so much because most of them are foreign students. Um, back to the building for a minute. Uh, the, I alluded to the electric system, uh, the electric heating and air conditioning. Uh, the, the design of the envelope of the building, when I say the envelope, I mean the walls, including the windows, uh, the roof, the ceiling of the first floor parking level, all of that is very heavily insulated, uh, much more than you would normally do in your house, even though it's called passive house. Um, and the systems operating inside, the heating and cooling, which is being designed by the Zaid Company in Quincy, who we're doing another project with, a passive house project, uh, that heating and cooling is a separate, separate, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, the, the, the air is, a, there's a great emphasis on the air exchange coming in and leaving so that uh, a, not a lot of heat is lost or a lot of cooling is lost in the summer. The result of this passive house methodology, which is increasing across the Northeast and in Canada, the Canadians were, I think, first on the case, is that the heating and cooling costs are radically reduced. Uh, I've been out of a house for a long time, for 12 years. I forget what we were paying for 
heating and cooling in our house, but the heating and cooling in these dwelling units, a two bedroom dwelling unit, will run $100 a month, as opposed to the, what are you paying for heating and cooling per month? The, the systems are, oh yes, and they're very friendly to your pocketbook. Very friendly, a hundred bucks a month to heat and or cool. And most of the, most of the newer buildings in the city or in, the, in New England are using this, this, uh, this method. Passive house, it's a misleading name, but there it is. Um, so why don't we go through the rest of the plans? Some of them at least. Um, here, this is a little redundant. Scott's plan is, Scott, could you hold that up? And could we move up further to where people are sitting? So th this is a, Scott's plan is, has perhaps some more detail, but this plan is intended to make a distinction between the parking and everything else. And uh, I was just chatting with one of Susan's constituents who says there's not enough parking. I don't know. This is at about, it's just over one car per dwelling unit. It's 1.1. 1.1. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and where's the, did you want to say something to that? Yeah, that's, that's what we have is 1.1 per unit. Well, uh, how many parking spots do we have? 94. 90, 94. Check your math. 87, 94. That's thank you. No, that, 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 that train of thought is inaccurate. Listen to the engineer. Okay. <laughs> and included in that will be, uh, uh, we, we're not showing them, but there will be uh, facilities for charging your electric vehicle. Does anyone have an electric vehicle here? I do. I love my car. From all the other projects that we've done downtown that have about one space per unit, most of them have less than one space, but if we say it's one space per unit, when you drive by there, the parking lots are maybe half used. People that are renting these units aren't using the parking spaces. It doesn't work for me, it probably doesn't work for you, but the people that are renting these, that the realtors end up marketing the units to, they don't have two and three cars 
for a family. They just don't. It's me. I do. No, it's it. You know. So that's what I mean. Honestly, Everett's a great guy. The building's going to be beautiful. I can't rent a unit from him because I've got four cars in my driveway. So, I mean, it, it essentially becomes Everett's problem. He can't rent to me. He's got to find 87 people to move in here that only have one car for a family. And as I said, all of those apartments that have been built in the last five years, if you drive around tonight at 9 o'clock, you can drive around tomorrow morning in case everybody was out tonight. The parking lots are empty. They're not full. There's not a parking issue with these type of developments in the city. It just isn't. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying in Brockton. If, no, I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm saying if you... I agree. Main Street's busy. I'm saying the residential development, the residential buildings that have been built in the last five years, up and down Maine and Montello, you drive by there right now, get up tomorrow morning and drive by, the parking lots are not full. The people that are moving in here don't have vehicles. I'm not saying the people that live in the three family on Warren Ave don't have a lack of parking and are not parking in the street. I agree they are. But not the people that live in these developments. I know all. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if they do, Veronica, my, no, it, it isn't. Each unit is going to be allowed one space per unit. That's what I'm saying. Me and my wife will not move in here because we both have a car. So that's the issue. They have to find people that can move in here, and they're all over Brockton. All of these apartments have people that only have one or less car per unit. It's the truth. They're not going to rent if you have two or three cars. It's that simple. Honestly, I do believe there can only be one car, because I was just taking notes. And that's why I asked you the question. 43 residents on one side and 43 three on the other. Um, how much parking space is underneath? I don't know. He said 91. But he I'll said 91. Up. So you have to divide 91 into two. Two divided by 91. Sorry. I'm not good at math. I have a follow-up question. Please go ahead. Uh, on the matter, the So the matters of security are management issues as a, as a rule, and, and, and partly they're a design issue. So in this, in this plan, which is the first floor plan, you see at the end towards Main Street is, where is, is the main entry into the building. This is where the elevator is and stairs and various ancillary things, including enclosed and including a level of security. And I don't know what that level is. And that's why, I mean, we don't have the guy from Pua here tonight. He could address that. But I can't really define that for you. Again, just talking of all the other buildings in Brooklyn. Thank you. That have this situation, that have parking on the ground level and residential uh, units up above. To get into the, the parking garage, it, it's a fob. You need to get into the gate. The gate is closed at all times. You have to go in there, you put your, your key card in at the fob, and it opens the gate, and you get in. Uh, to get into the building, it's the same thing. You, it's, you need a key card to get into the building. So it's secure that way. There's typically management uh, you know, on, on staff and on site at all times. There's, there's somebody on site at all times. That's how all of these projects are. You, the, you can't just get into the garage and drive around, you're not going to be able to get a parking spot in the garage. Somebody that wants to 
go to one of the businesses on Main Street isn't going to be able to pull into the garage. So. My question is, what impact would this development have on the sewer system versus water? Sewer system. Well, we discovered in the course of designing this that right down the middle of uh, the street here uh, on, on East Market, right down the middle, buried, is a three-foot diameter sewer pipe. And we had, an early, we had an earlier plan, maybe in July or so, that had these buildings connected overhead. Do you recall seeing that? Yeah, you remember that. That was stage three. And uh, that did not go down well with the, uh, uh, the fire department. We could not have an connect overhead connection, even though it might be up three stories. Uh, that, that didn't work. So that's why we have a clean break between building A and building B. But, to more directly answer the question, there's, I mean, as far as we know and from everything we've heard, there's ample water and sewer in the city. So there's, uh, there, there's no issue with, with either of those utilities. Well, that would be the drainage. So that would be the drainage. The drainage is, is a separate issue, but, as far, but I can talk about that. But as far as water and sewer, there's plenty of water in the city and plenty of sewer in the city to connect the, the residential units to that. The drainage issue is a totally different issue and, and one that's uh, in the news plenty now. So as part of this development, as a redevelopment, and to conform with the city of Brockton stormwater management guidelines, they have new regulations. We're required to handle all of the runoff from our property on our own site. So we have underground drainage systems where all the water will come in and leach into the groundwater that way. Uh, so that's a requirement that's, it's been around for 30 years now, but the city, uh, Brockton just started enforcing the stormwater regulations probably in the last five years. So that's something that we have to comply with. It's part of our site plan approval. And in addition to that, after site plan approval, it has to go to the stormwater authority. So there's all kinds of uh, levels of regulations that we have to get through to prove that we're handling the runoff and that we won't have any adverse impact on Main Street, Montello, any of the neighboring properties with our drainage. Actually, someone else has a question. You can't move yet. Oh, I'm going to have to stand up. Uh, I have a big background in uh, living in the city of Brockton, born in 1936. And I'm looking at what you're saying here, and to me I'm looking at a whole bunch of apartments in a very small space. But I, what I'd like to talk about is the traffic. Driving around Brockton is always a challenge. We have five crossings in South Brockton over the railroad tracks. And lining up going from east to west or west to east is always a challenge. If you're coming down West Chestnut Street, East Market Street is part of the trip. You come down East uh, West Chestnut, you come down to Market Street, cross over to East Market, you're not dodging the light you're trying to get to 28, or you're trying to get to Perkins or Plain Street to get over to the east side. Same thing going backwards, uh, but you're stuck because Market Street is basically one way. So Market Street is really part of the traffic pattern. If I look at the policeman over there, I'm sure he's used it many times, and he wishes they would repave it because they're killing the cars. But uh, nobody lives on Market Street, certainly no politician, so they're never going to pay it, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> repay it, pay, pave it over. Uh, so, you know, I look at it and I just say, uh, too much in too small a space. You know, to me it doesn't, no matter how nice the building is, you have no, no, no access behind it, 
Route 28, and you know, those trucks coming around the corner, uh, coming off of Plain Street trying to get on. The, you know, one car parked at the end of the street, and uh, we got a mess, especially with the buses trying to get down to the bus terminal. And, uh, you know, we've got a channel. You get all those dump trucks trying to get over to Trojan, just over the Perkins Ave Bridge. So, you know, this, uh, uh, we do need housing, but this looks like too much for too little of a space. My thoughts, anyway. I didn't do it for applause. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Ron Bethany. <clears throat> I'm the president of the Camp Hello Business Association. I've been living in my building. I own the old Cariola Shoe Building. I've been there for 39 years. And first of all, East Market Street is not a recognized street. I always ask Paul Stadinsky, why don't you pave that? Why don't you pave? Well, we can't touch it. It's not it's recognized. So everybody's been on that street for all these years, but keeping it clean when it snows, he plows it, he does everything else. As far as uh, parking goes, I have five rentals. I own, I own property in Brockton. <clears throat> and each one of my tenants only have one car. They're only allowed one automobile. And, and they, that's, what they, that's what they live by. So my opinion about this operation that he's trying to do with the way he's gonna build is a great thing for the city of Brockton. It's a great thing for Camp Pello. We need more people to come into Camp Pello. They can eat at the Italian kitchen, they go to Cape Cod Cafe, they can get their hair done in the barber shop. There's plenty of businesses down that can use more customers. So I'm all in favor of uh, Everett Murray and his wife's uh, project. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I just wanted to respond to the earlier point made about the parking, and I wanted to say that. Um, I agree strongly, and I think that is something that has been like thought over constantly and tried to improve upon. And I think that when putting new infrastructures in places that aren't really um, existing in that capacity now, you run into these kind of problems. There's complications that you're going to run into when you put, you know, 80 plus units into a condensed area in this capacity. So yes, it's a space that doesn't house 85 people now plus people, and it doesn't have space now for cars, but. I think there's also opportunity within this infrastructure for there to be a lot of upside, and it can be seen as such. Right now, um, as just mentioned a second ago, Campello is a space that doesn't really have this much foot traffic. It doesn't have the people that can hit all of these spaces. With this infrastructure alone, traffic is going to be a whole different problem. You know, Main Street is going to look different on the south side of Brockton. There's no way that the that intersection right there that has the red and yellow light at the same time, so you know who to cross the street, that's not going to look the same in two years into this project. These streets are going to look better. The restaurants, the buildings around this building are going to look better, and it also is structured in a way that doesn't enable the south side of Brockton to then become gentrified, but it enables the community that lives in this space now to exist in this space and then excel in this space. And it's a beautiful thing that way. So yes, there is a problem with parking, but that problem is then abated by each unit has a parking spot. And the point that was made earlier about each unit having a parking space, and if you have two cars, maybe you don't live here. That's a true point, and that's something that is solved with that. And then the problem with security is something that is also solved. There's going to be gates that are in there, and residents have a key to then get into the gates. And if you don't have a key, you can't get into the gate. So of course, there's problems with new infrastructures all the time, but there's a lot of upside to this project, too. That's our thoughtful younger generation. What do you say? Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, did we talk about this one yet? Here you see 14 or 15 apartments. This is a typical floor plan when you get above the parking. You with me? Building A, building B. And uh, there are three levels of housing generally following the same plan. And they each contain a mix of two bedrooms a few three bedrooms and a very few uh, studios. 
So there's some variety, and that goes back to Bill Grogan, the developer. He wants a variety of, of housing in here, including families, couples, whatever. Uh, or someone who maybe has a two-bedroom who, who works from home, and one of his bedrooms or her bedrooms is an office. You were born what year? I'm 39. Okay, uh, here, yeah, here, here is a, uh, a view, let's see, what side are we on? The Main Street side. We're looking at the buildings A and B as they come up to Main Street. And this, the coloration is not great here. The coloration uh, does not convey the fact that we, this would be brick like those tall built, who was I arguing with about the buildings across the street? They're very tall, and they're, you, yes. And what color are they? They're red brick. This will be red brick. It'll be, the intention is that it blend in with the neighborhood. Uh, this will be a different product here, different color, different finish, and going down the street, the facade does some jigging and jogging, as does, if you look back here, as does Scott's uh, uh, street plan. You see it has a curve in it, where, where, where the, the architecture is responding, in a way, to that curve. And going down the street, the elevations are longer, and I mean, they're, they're going from uh, Montello to Maine, and you can see, I hope you can see, we have some brick at the ends. In between, we can see the parking down here. That parking will be screened. My, my, we didn't get the screening on the parking that we discussed at a meeting at City Hall, but that will be screened. <laughs> and uh, uh, above, on floors two, three and four, you'll see these are bays that are projecting to give the whole thing a little bit of more interest. It's not unlike, it's not, it's not just like, but it's not unlike a street in the North End, if you know what I mean, you know, where you can, last year I had dinner there sitting out on the street. It's very crowded. The street wasn't very wide. The cars are moving slowly. I gave some bread to the guy on the going by me. Um, any questions on this? This is our storefront on Montello side, Main Street side. On Main Street. Those will be storefronts, yeah. There'll be some retail activity. Okay. And who knows what it will be. Okay. Yeah, so the existing storefront on Main Street will remain commercial retail. Excuse me. I think there's a high point here. Are there any more great good ones? Uh, uh, I made a note about electric vehicles, but that's... Uh, <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. I'd like to ask uh, the what is the situation with uh, Lynch's property? Uh, meaning, you know, that's another huge complex going right around the corner in the same area. And... Uh, if, if I understand what you're saying, East Market Street's going to be one way, which means all 87 cars got to go one way to Montello Street, which is exactly where Lynch's property is, where he's got, uh, how many properties was he, he got rezoned. Well, that's not quite accurate because Mr. Lynch sold his property not too long ago to NeighborWorks, and they're going to, they're getting ready to start developing. 
something there, uh, residential dwelling, under 100 units, isn't it? Just under 100. 98 units, that's right, with parking on the first level. And um, you'll notice that Mr. Lynch's trucks have been relocated elsewhere. Yes, I think, I think um, his arrangement was that he had to be out by December. And it looks like he's going to make that deadline. And so they will probably commence in early 2024. In, a, in addition, the property across the street from his, um, some people think that it's you know abandoned or whatever. There was a fire there a number of years ago. And I believe that property has also been acquired by Neighbor Works. Isn't that right, Scott? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, yes. Twenty-four. That's right. Yes. Right. And as these gentlemen have referred to earlier, those projects were approved with one um, parking space per unit. But there was an understanding at at least one of the the ZBA hearings that they could go to the MBTA and try to make arrangements to rent some more spaces. The MBTA has a rule, they don't rent spaces pers prospectively. So after the projects are built, they can then petition them to uh, rent some spaces, right? Right. By my by my estimate, there were about 200 vehicles parked here. And the lot was, again, by my estimate, the, the lot was one half full. Uh, so they, the possibility of renting, I think, is there. And also, what's interesting about this is the proximity to Everett's project up here, the one outlined in red. This is a, well, I, you tell me, that's an eight minute walk down there? Four. Four minute walk? Who said that? He said five minutes. Okay. It's a quarter mile. It depends. It's all relative. But it, it's a quarter mile from the train station. Yes. Yep, correct. I was just, I'm assuming that that's going to be a private snow contractor because I don't think the city will like. It won't, the city doesn't have Okay. It will say that it's back to the private world, so the city doesn't plow it down. But it's going to be private. Someone else? Okay. Let me go over here. Sure. Uh, I have a couple of quick questions. First of all, um, is Market Street, you, I believe you said that it... Hold it a little closer, you said so, so I've spoken. Okay. Um, I believe that you said that Market Street was a private way. East Market. East Market. And if, um, can ordinary cars go down there when this building is built? I heard this gentleman talk about traveling east and west and how difficult it was, but you have many options to go east and west. Who, that was you, who, who was it? You, yeah. Uh, but we would, we, we're not looking for traffic from the public on this street. No what? Are the are the uh, are the 
are the apartments going to be condos or are they going to be apartments or condos? They're going to be uh, apartments, not condos. All apartments? All apartments. All apartments. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sure. One more quick one. Um, how many people are going to be allowed in each type of apartment? I would think that the there is a there are I think there are six three bedroom units in the project, and my intention was that this be family housing not students from the local college over here, not 10 students. So we're looking to accommodate families that may need the husband and wife have a bedroom and the kids have their bedrooms and the wife is working at home. You know what I mean? But how, how many people are, are renting a two bedroom? Uh, I think that, that is sometimes a management issue. The managers of the property don't want a lot of people in a two-bedroom. And most of these are two-bedroom units. Sure. At no additional charge. Um, I just wanted to ask, what, when, when you're entertaining, you have to know your audience. Who are the people, what type of people are coming in here? Are they students? Are they people who live in Boston and want a cheaper rent so they're coming out here but won't care about Brockton? Well, I, I don't know. We sold our house in Newton and I moved to Waltham to save some money. I wrote them a check two days ago for $3,700. That's my rent. That's pretty steep for Waltham, which ain't Newton. So, but that's not the case here. This, I told you, is by, a, the developer is a nonprofit using tax credits. How the hell they do that, I don't know, but they manipulate that. Yeah, I think, as, as was said you know, earlier, I, I, I think the hope is that a project like this is is mostly inhabited by Brockton residents right now that are that are looking to either move out of home and get an apartment on their own that are just entering the workforce. It's the you know the, the buzzword around is workforce housing. They're not luxury apartments. They're not going to be three thousand dollars a month where it's out of range of most people. It's hopefully it's rental apartments for regular Brockton people. That's who the Murrays would like to have move in here. A regular guy that's got a regular job for the school department, a regular cop that can live there. It's not going to be luxury apartments that uh, that are going to be built here. They're going to be uh, workforce housing is is the buzzword. That's that's what we're looking for. We're hoping it's Brockton people renting an apartment off of a Brockton guy. Everett's been a businessman in town forever. That's that's what he's hoping for. That is Brockton people renting from a Brockton guy. They said you're going to need $80,000 to $120,000 for income to rent one of these places. Scott alluded to workforce housing, and workforce housing uh, usually is aimed at persons of a median income, anywhere from 80 to 120. Median. That's the thrust of, that's most of the units. And in conversation, have you ever met, have you met Bill Grogan? So you know, you know the, the organization. Okay, so Bill is also looking to have some, help me on the language, some um, supported housing in here. Supported, that's not the word. Affordable, affordable mixed in with the workforce housing. But that's a, a smaller percentage. Thank you. Yeah. 
I'd like to make it clear that I want something. I really do. I want community. I want somewhere I can walk past and be really proud, meet a few people that move in, enjoy life. But I also feel like I'm fighting for quality of life because putting a residence, residential unit this size in a commercial zone without giving attention to the residential needs is what I fear most. One is the parking. Two is green space. You got kids? You need yard. There's no yard. The token trees that you have up against the back on the south side to prevent, right, the parking from going into the neighboring yards or the headlights or whatever it is you're preventing isn't a play space for kids. You got apartments and you're saying you want families. That's great. But where are they going to be? Where's the snow going? Quality of life is what we need to fight for. And residential needs residential guidelines. I don't think it's fair to put residential communities in commercial zones. We need to work on quality of life. certainly debate, but, but again, all of the building that's gone on in Brockton, the only, the only reason you can have housing in Brockton is if it's allowed in commercial zones. There's no room for large residential development in the residential zones. It's a, a zoning issue, not a neighborhood issue. That's a zoning issue. So all of these projects, again, that have been built in the last five years up and down Main Street in Montello, that's hopefully revitalizing the, the city, it's all in zones that are commercial. That's the only place we can we can build these. I'm not saying we can't build residential in the zone, in commercial zones. I'm saying the residential units that we have up against the back of the building that are requirements need to be addressed. We can't continue to put these people in boxes and expect them to live their lives inside their walls, get in their little cars, and go out to W Field Park every day to have their kids play. I'm saying when we've got hundreds and hundreds of apartment builds going up, it needs to be our choice as residents to make sure the quality of life is there for the people we're asking to move in. I agree with you. Thank you. I'm getting my steps in tonight. I also agree with you, and I think that is very true, but I do think, um, going back to my earlier point about this being an opportunity, um, is still my answer to this. And I do think that fostering a community is something that is very true, but I do think with the opportunity, there is great opportunity. Where the train tracks are, right over there, where the lot is, that's a quarter mile away. And just next to the train tracks, there's a park that's right there. And right now, I mean, you probably haven't been there. I've never been there, but, yeah. Oh yeah, so you've been there, but this, this Yes, and I agree, and I do think that the solution to that could be a project such as this, or could be a project, yeah. One of the things I mentioned last time when we met was that I thought community centers downstairs would be good. The library would be good. Well, the library for the kids, an activity center, something that they can come in and play and have fun and have their own space. Yeah, and I agree, and I think that is a good point, but I do think that my walk from Perkins Ave right now down to maybe the gas station that's right over here would be a lot more enjoyable if I was walking by a new building instead of the buildings that currently exist on East Market Street. And I do think, too, that the, the opportunity with storefronts that exist below these buildings could be opportunity for something else. They're, they're advertised as storefronts right now, but this could be space for something like a library or a community space or something of that nature that can then foster that 
um, relationship. And I wanted to respond to the earlier point about um, these being spaces that are advertised for families. There's only so many units in this building that are for like three bedroom units or even two bedroom units. This is space that is you know, um, being advertised to maybe younger kids as, such as myself. When you're ready to move out of your house, you can move into these studio apartments. You can move into these one or two bedroom apartments with a younger friend. And that does leave space for Brockton to stay within Brockton. So we're not really aiming to pull in people from Boston that are looking for more affo affordable housing, but instead leaving space for, you know, Brockton kids that may exist here now to move into a new apartment that's nice and you, it's affordable still while also giving you access to Boston because you're a quarter mile away from the train tracks and then there's an opportunity within that too. I, do, I think everything you're saying is very valid and I do think that these are things that um, should be prioritized as the project is coming to a close or um, starting to be built and I do think that there's great opportunity to answer all those questions by way of this project. Thank you. I'm, I'm Heading your way. I feel I'm going to get a lesson here. <laughs> uh, Everett's development is concentrated in the two long buildings from street to street. He also owns, out here in Perkins, another building, which is, in fact, part of this whole... It's, it's, excuse me. It's, it's part of the development. And it's labeled here as Building C. Uh, it has a laundromat, small office space, gym, and community room on the second floor. It's not been developed. We don't have a plan for it on the first and second floor. But thought has been given to it. And I appreciate your highlighting it so I could show it. I know exactly what you're saying. Okay, well, it, we're at that point where we need to start wrapping up. So, is there someone who would like to speak who hasn't spoken? Ask a question, make a comment? Okay. That'd be swell. Hi, I'm Laura Andrade. My husband and I um, own 1156 Main Street. Um, and previously lived in Brockton, we live outside of Brockton, but I really do see this as an opportunity. All the points that you've made are valid. Um, and whenever um, you're developing places for people to go, you want to have those things that you mentioned. But I do agree with this young man. You've very well spoken. Um, and in terms of um, even the parking, I can reiterate, because my son lives in Boston, and he lives in, a, in an apartment that's three roommates, and my first comment when I got there, when I went, went to visit was, you only have one parking space. And he's like, mom, we don't need it. You know, they Uber, <laughs> they, um, you know, they, you know, they go to local restaurants, they walk. Uh, it's just very different today, you know. Um, they do a lot, it's very responsible, they travel responsibly. <laughs> Um, but I do see this as an opportunity for Campello to really have a facelift. Um, right now, when you walk by there in our, our building, it, it really is a terrible sight on the building that's right behind us. Uh, so I really do see this as a facelift and an opportunity, and hopefully the things that you're talking about could really just open up opportunities to have other development that can bring these things as well. I don't know about this project because again, it's these, it's this East Market Street and the two in the two buildings. I don't know about having something right there. The park that you mentioned, it's funny when I when you sent the notice, I went on and looked and I said, oh, there's a park over here, and I never knew about it. You know, so I think, but I think that is an opportunity for Brockton to kind of market and put those things out there, because a lot of people are just not aware. Right, and, and that's, that's something else that needs to be addressed. Thank you. 
in. For the utilized now because of the infrastructure that I have played, but with this, there is an opportunity for that. With there being a face of two bucks away, that could be a face of the market. Any, any, oh, baby. Any closing comments? Because I can close. No, you can just move my question. is going to look like from here on out. We're doing it. We've got some approved. We're looking to do more. I'm not saying it's wrong, but we've got to look at what an R3 requires as opposed to a commercial. You're not, it's not right to put families and kids into a box and expect them to stay there except when they get in their car and leave their home. That's my point. That's not quality of life. You live on a second floor, it's hard enough. You live on a third floor, it's even harder. Just to get out and see the sun and enjoy your, pro your location. I'm saying we need to look at what residential requires in putting it in the commercial zone. And we need to make some guidelines that don't keep people in boxes. Thank you. Okay. Building. Is there one or two elevators in each building? Two. And so it's going to be as tall as the Franklin building. As tall as the Franklin building. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The Franklin building has ceiling, ceilings in there. I was noticing that today. I bet they're at 12 feet easily. And on the top, it's probably 16 feet. Uh, and on that note, I would like to thank everybody who came here. And I'd like to thank your counselor, Susan, for organizing this in a timely fashion. Thank you, Susan. So just to close, before we stop rolling the tape, this, this, these people have applied for zoning relief and they're going to be heard at the November Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, which will be 6 o'clock on Tuesday, November 14th in the City Council Chambers. You're all welcome to go and raise any issues that you'd like. I will write up a summary of tonight's meeting and send it into the Zoning Board of Appeals so they're aware of the issues raised. I've received several emails, responses to my flyer that I mailed out along the lines of what you've all said tonight. And I want to thank you all for coming. This is terrific. There's lots of places you could be on a Friday night in November, and thank you for spending it for a little while with us. Good night. <laughs>